Somebody needs says good to see you this evening. Amen. Certainly, it is a blessing once more and again to be in the house of God with the people of God for no other purpose than to worship, praise, magnify, and uplift the mighty and magnificent God of heaven. For truly, He is worthy of all of our praise. For God has been better to us than we can ever even consider being to our very own selves. Amen. We've had an awesome time in the Lord all day here this morning. Um, the Lord has blessed us and we ought to be every opportunity that we have as a family to come together for the purpose of learning more about God and his word. We ought to take advantage of that opportunity. So we invite you to Sunday morning Bible study. We invite you to Sunday morning worship. We invite you to Sunday. You ain't got no excuse. You work in the morning. Catch us at six o'clock in the afternoon. And if you ain't doing that on Wednesday night, we invite you to come out and be with us on Wednesday night Bible study. Well, two or three are gathered in his name. He said, there am I in the midst of them. You ain't got to have 500 folk in a place. You got five folk that got faith in Jesus Christ and love the Lord and want to serve him. Guess what? You can get a whole lot done. Amen, somebody. Amen. We, we can open up the doors. Now, we good. Now, that, that was the whole word. All best. <laughs> amen. Amen. If you have your Bible, Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18. And just number 21 for our consideration on this afternoon. There was a preacher who was completing a sermon on temperance. And with great expression, he said, if I had all the be in the world, I'd take it and throw it in the river. With even greater expression, he said, and if I had all the wine in the world, I'd take it and throw it in the river. And then finally, he said, and if I had all the whiskey in the world, I take it and throw it in the river. He sat down. The song leader then stood up very cautiously and announced with a smile for our closing song. Let us sing hymn number 365, Shall We Gather at the River. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Be me at the river. Amen. Amen. Proverbs. Chapter 18 and verse number 21. You can't laugh, you ain't living. Amen. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse number 21. And the Bible says simply, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I want to talk briefly this afternoon about the smallest member in your body that has the most power out of all of the members of your body. 
And simply this afternoon, just look at somebody and say, you need to watch your mouth. Y'all know it's amazing that such a small member of our body has so much power. But it is true, church, that the tongue can make the difference between life and death. And the tongue can make the difference between joy and sorrow. It, 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 it can be used to grow a church or it can be used to tear a church down. Of course, the tongue can, cannot do all these things by itself because it is just a tool that needs to operate. Jesus explains it this way in Mark chapter 7 beginning at verse 14. It says, when he had called all the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear me, everyone, and understand. There is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile a man. If anyone has ears, let him hear. When he had entered a house away from the crowd, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. So it is said to them, are you thus without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him? Because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach, and is eliminated, thus purifying all foods. And he said, what comes out of a man, that is what defiles him. For from within, out of the hearts of man, proceeds evil thoughts, proceeds adulteries, proceeds fornications and murders and thefts and covetousness and wickedness and deceit and lewdness and evil eye, blasphemy, pride and foolishness. All these evil things come from within and they defile a man. So the condition of our heart church determines the outcome of whether our tongue will be used for good or whether it will be used for evil. Because at the end of the day, it's not that you got a problem with your mouth, you really got a problem with your heart. So Proverbs chapter 13 and verse number 3 says, I love this, he said, and I want to tell you church, if you want to become wise, read the book of Proverbs. If you want to become aware of the things that are going on, you need to read the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 3 says, He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 23, Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from trouble. Now church, we must keep our guard up at all times. Because if we don't, we will end up saying things that we should not and things that you will often regret after you have said them. So the best way for us to make sure that we don't allow our tongue to be destructive in its nature is by training our tongue to speak righteous things. By training our tongue also to not just speak righteous things, but to abstain from speaking those things that are considered evil in the outside of God. So Proverbs chapter 16 verse 23 and 24 says that the heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. So we need to understand that the words that we speak define who we are. I said the words that you speak, the conversations that you entertain, they, 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 they define who you are. And if you ever hope to be a good example to other people, then you need to learn to purify your mind. You need to learn to purify your thoughts. And Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 4 and 5, he says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity under the obedience of Christ. So the reason it is so important for us to do this is because you are a representative of Jesus Christ. You signed up for this. He didn't make you do it. You signed up for this. You are a representation of Jesus Christ. So therefore, he expects you to talk and speak in such a way that he can be pleased with. So I want you to think about, in your own mind, this past week that you just came out of. When you got around your friends, did you participate in foul language? Did you one-up them by telling a joke that wasn't so nice? 
Did you lie to someone just this past week? Or did you speak rudely or angrily to somebody this past week and you still ain't went back and tried to make the thing right? Only you can honestly answer the questions that I just asked you. If you did any of these things, can you honestly say that at that moment you were representing Jesus? Of course not. We need to realize that the only way those outside of this building, those outside of the church are going to be able to see Christ is about the example that you give to other people. Do you know that you are the only Bible a lot of folk will ever read? Because they are looking at your example as a pattern for them to follow after. Now, if you leave worship and you put your worldly hat on and act like everyone else, you are misrepresenting Christ in his church. When people know that you are a Christian and they see or hear you doing things that a Christian should not be doing, you are giving the Lord's church a bad name. We, what can we possibly offer to the world if we look and act just like them? We need to remind ourselves on a daily basis that when we died with Christ in baptism, we made a commitment to live our life for him. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 and through 3 says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand side of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Also, Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, he says, For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died, and he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. So you got to stop living your life for yourself. Oh, I'm living for me. You got to stop living your life for yourself and start living for Jesus. When we live our life for Christ and use our mouth, our speech, our tongue for righteousness, we can make a difference in people's lives and you can also help the church grow. You know that? You can help the church grow. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 20 says that the tongue of the righteous is choice silver, but the heart of the wicked is worth but a little. I'll read that again. He said that the tongue of the righteous is choice silver, but the heart of the wicked is worth but a little. Every morning when we wake up, we have to make the decision that you are going to guard your tongue and focus on being the best example that you can be so that you can be a shining example of Christ because we are commanded by scripture to watch what we say. Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 6 says, let your speech always, not sometimes, but let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each other. So some of us, if you, to help you out, some of us, before you respond, think. Don't be so quick because that's our problem a lot of times when, when people are speaking in our direction, our immediate reaction is to send something back in your direction. But before you speak, you ought to take a moment and think. That's why you got to make sure that you season your speech and make sure you season your words before you respond to what is being said. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 29, he says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. Get from me 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 15 through 16. So you can't say I'm just telling you something. I'm giving you all the scriptures in the world to back up what I'm saying. <laughs> amen. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 15 and 16 says. But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy. Always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you a reason of the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. So he's saying, simply put, live your life in such a way that when folk talk about you, ain't nobody going to believe it because they already know the lifestyle that you are living. Clearly, church, we are to do our best 
to keep our words pure no matter the situation. Sometimes the best thing that we can do is just don't say nothing. You know you ain't got to respond to everything. You know, you know every action you ain't got to react to it. Paul, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 2 says do not be rash with your mouth. I believe God was talking. To he, he, he knew what we was going to be dealing with in these days of the time. In Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse number 2 he said don't be rash with your mouth and let not your heart utter anything hastily before God. In other words don't be in a hurry to give a response. For God is in heaven and you on earth therefore let your words be few. Oh that's why I believe he gave us two ears and one mouth so we can listen more than we respond. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 28 says, even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace. When he shuts his lips, he is considered per perceptive. God gave us, as I just said, two ears and one mouth. And we would be wise to listen twice as much as we speak. This is the advice that James gives us when he writes in James chapter 1 and verse 19. So in verse 20 he says, so then my beloved brethren, let every man be slow to speak and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not do the righteousness of God. Now many of our outbursts and our three and four letter words that we got stashed away could be stopped if we would simply listen more and speak less. Now since we are representing someone as holy and as pure and as righteous as Jesus is, it should cause us to think very hard about the words that we use and most importantly the example that you are setting. Now every time you slip up and give the devil an advantage in your life and in the lives of people that you interact with, you must never underestimate the influence that you got on other people. I wish I could tell you that you could become perfect at taming your tongue. I wish I had some remedy and tell you, you follow step one, step two, and step three, and you'll be that brother Campbell, but if that's what you came for, I'm sorry, I ain't got it. <laughs> Even the apostle Peter was not perfect in this area. You remember his struggle in Galatians chapter two, beginning at verse number 11. It said, now when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. But Paul was a bad man. Paul, Paul didn't talk about you behind your back. Paul would wait until you got in the church. He called you right over there and said, now let me tell you what I got to tell you. Paul said, I withstood him to his face. For before certain men came from James, he would eat with Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. And the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him, so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, if you being a Jew live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as the Jews? Paul, Paul, Paul told them off. <laughs> Paul, Paul told him what he needed to hear. Peter was with Jesus from the beginning. And he was one of the original 12 apostles. He was an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And he did many great things to help the furtherance of the gospel and to help the furtherance of the church. God even chose Peter to be the first Jewish man to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Yet we find him sinning. Uh -huh. And because of his actions, he was influencing yeah. other yeah. faithful Christians yeah. to follow in his footsteps. Thankfully, Paul didn't stand for that. Paul said, let me tell you something. You're not, you're not going to be, let me tell you something what you need here. Paul withstood him. Yes, sir. He withstood him to his face. Yes, sir. Peter, thankfully, Paul corrected him in this example shows that church guess what you're gonna mess up sometimes y'all don't believe it over here you're gonna mess up sometimes but what is important 
is that you don't, is that you do your best not to mess up. You know, God honors effort. God honors somebody that's really putting forth some effort and trying to make a difference in their life. And when God sees you making an effort, he'll meet you down the road. However, sometimes our word search can cause so much destruction that the damage can never be undone. Some folks say words don't hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let them say the right words to you to change your attitude about that individual forever. A great example of this comes from the story. Um, uh, uh, and, and what I want to read first, James gives us a great insight of how destructive the tongue can be and how important it is that we do our best to control our tongue. In James chapter 3, beginning at verse number 1, this is what he says. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, he who bits his horse's mouth, that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships, although they are large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasts great things, so how great a forest a little fire kindles. Church James is teaching us that we are not perfect. James admitted that he wasn't even perfect. And we will stumble from time to time. But if we can get to the point in our life where we can control our tongue, we will be perfect. We will be perfect that is fully mature because once you can control your tongue, you can control your actions. Once you can control your tongue, you can control your actions because again, your heart, that is your thoughts, are the driving force behind your tongue. James illustrates how we could control our entire body and our actions if we could control our tongue by pointing out how massive a horse is. But all you do is put a little bit in his mouth and you can turn him to whatever side you want him to go. He then gives the depiction of a ship. You know, as big as a ship is, it only takes a small rudder to direct, to turn off the direction of where the ship is going. So you may not think the things that you are saying are making that much of an impact, but things that you say really make a difference. And sometimes it's not so much what you say, it's how you say it. Because some folk, you may have good advice, but you don't know how to get it out. And sometimes you really may be trying to do some good, but you don't really know how to relay the information over if you catch what I'm saying. So James chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 says, Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire by hell. We have all seen how destructive just a little bit of spark of fire can be. You know, it don't take a, you don't take a big blaze to burn something down. It can start off just as a little bitty spark. And when a spark happens in the right place, it can catch everything on fire. Right. Burning trees down, burning houses down. Look at the wild, the, the, the fires that were taking place in California and other places. How just a little bit of fire all of a sudden can just destroy miles and miles of land. In the same way, church, you got to take caution with how you use your tongue. Because James says that our tongue is just as destructive as a fire that is out of control. And when you lose control of your tongue and the words that you spew out happen at the right time, lives can be destroyed. Right. And people can be, you, know, you want to know how many people, new babies in Christ, have been ran from the church because people didn't know how to talk to them? Do you know how many people have come to Christ, but because they ran into the wrong attitude when they got there, and they just said, well, if this person is like that, I expect everybody up in here is like that. And because of the words that you said, because of the attitude that you have, you ran 
people are. Little man come in with his hair sticking every which way. You ain't got to say nothing to him. That's his style. Man come in with a hat on his head. He may not know anything about your culture and your practice. And let him sit there with his go on. And maybe he can give God a praise. And look what? You can work with him. And guess what? You can teach him a little bit something better. James says, when this destructive fire is unleashed from our unbridled tongues, that it gets its fuel from hell itself. That's what James said. That's what James said. Because an uncontrolled tongue, church, is full of iniquity. An a uncontrolled tongue is full of iniquity. So Proverbs says, again, Proverbs got a lot, about, a lot to say. A lot to say. So again, if you want to learn how to control this thing, I, I advise you this week, check out Proverbs. You can finish it this week. You got that time. You got enough time to do that. So, so next Sunday, when I come up to you and start asking you questions about Proverbs, don't be surprised because I'm charging everybody. Go read Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 11 says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. When you choose your words carefully and wisely, they can change lives for the better. And we can say with confidence at that moment, we are representing Christ and we are building the church up when we guard our tongue and we use the power of our tongue for good instead of evil. One of the best ways for us to learn to do this is by changing ourselves, not from the outside in, but from the inside out, which means that you got to change your heart. That's right. The writer of Psalm says in Psalm chapter 119, beginning at verse number 11, he said, your word have I hidden in my heart. That's my favorite scripture right there. He said, he said, that word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. He said, blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate on your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Yes. Church, the more you put God's word in your heart, the more your lives are going to be changed. And the more you can be transformed as a child of God. Isaiah had something to say about it in Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 and 5, verse number 4. He said, the Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as one that has learned. Yeah. So don't neglect the word of God. I believe I say this every week. Don't neglect the word of God. Read your Bible sometime. Amen. Get in the word of God. Instead, use it daily. If for nothing else, you can use it to train your tongue. Yeah. So that you will speak as of the oracles of God. Another thing that will help us in our daily challenge of controlling our tongue. And that will help us to be a good example. Is by praying to God for wisdom and guidance in your speech. Ask God to help you with the things that you say. Ask God to help you with the tone of which you speak. Well, of which you speak to other people. So while we may never be able, let me rephrase that. While we will never be able to be the most perfect example and say the right thing every time, we can make the best effort. We can make the best strides on improving ourselves in this area by putting God's word in our heart and then by praying to God to give us strength, wisdom, and guidance every day of our life. Because you be real, it's a daily struggle. It's not something you struggle with every once in a while. It's a struggle every day. We battle every day with, should I say this? Or should I say that? We all, every day of our life, we have to make a decision. Am I going to use my speech for the wrong thing? Or am I going to use my speech for the right thing? I want to remind you, church, that it's important that we keep our tongues in check. Yes. 
It's important that we be mindful of the things that we say. It's important that we be mindful of the conversations that we entertain because you already know how it is. You saying some over here to somebody and you just know it, it's just going to be between you and them. And before you know it, you was talking about how red her shoe was. And before you know it, it didn't got back that it's X, Y, and Z, and A, B, and C, and you said this and that, and you said this. Be careful yeah. about the conversation that you keep. And then sometimes, when people are coming to you wanting to have conversation, sometimes you got to ask, why you want to talk to me? Oh, yeah. oh, no. Especially if you ain't got no relationship like that, man. Hey, man, you don't know me like that, man. You don't know me for real, for real. You just know me right now. But people, people coming up to you and they're trying to have conversation with you, trying to get certain information from you. Sometimes you got to think, instead of speaking, being so quick to say something, you think, man, what you over here? Who sent you? But well, who, who, who you represent? I know you represent the devil, but who sent you? Who, who, who sent you over here? Why, why do you want this information? Be careful. Be careful about the things that you say. And, and, then, and then, even if what you are telling somebody is for their good and for their betterment, there's a way that you can say it. You know it's a way to talk to everybody? You know you can't talk to me like you talk to Elder Denson. Because we're two totally different people. And, and I don't know, but we may receive stuff totally different. So, so, so the way you handle and deal with one individual, you can't deal with everybody else in that same way. Because what you say to other people, and they take it as a joke, somebody else might get sick, man, what, 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 what you say, what you want? <laughs> you have to be careful about the conversations that you keep. You have to be careful about the way in which it is perceived by the way. Because you don't want nobody talking to you crazy. Right. <laughs> so when you have conversations with other people, come to them respectfully. Amen. And before you respond to something, make sure that you season your speech. I don't know any of y'all, but if this is a good example. I thought about if you, once toothpaste is out of the tube. Uh, that was a good. Yeah, was once, 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 when you take that tube of toothpaste and you shoot the contents of that tube out, I don't care how hard you try, you can pray until your tongue fall out. That toothpaste ain't going back in that tube. Water that has been spilled on the ground can never be gathered up again. Once you put it out there. It's out there. That's just like social media. We post stuff and we say stuff, and, and, and then before we know, we want to go back and take it down, not knowing five folk that screenshotted it. They just sent it over here. They just sent it over there. You know, and once it's out there, once it's out there, that's why they call it the worldwide will. When you put it out there, it's already the made across the world. <laughs> it's already made across the world. So even in that, be careful about the stuff that you post. And I don't think some of us can recognize folk can see what you like on social media. Yes. Okay. So, 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 so if you like a stuff that you wouldn't want nobody to see you like, right. scroll past and don't hit like. Don't hit no reaction to it. <laughs> <laughs> scroll on past. Don't, don't react to it. Because that can, and you never know. We want to be the best example that we can be. And, and let me just be real. Let me just be real with you. Somebody's going to always find some fault with you. I, I don't care how good of, it, of an example you are. That Jesus was God in the flesh. And they had issues with Jesus. So if they had issues with, with, with him, guess what? They're going to have issues with you as well. But as I just read the scripture, that even when somebody comes with a a statement or an accusation or a judgment about your life he says that you ought to be already be living your life in such a way that when folk hear it man you're talking trash man you man oh, oh man you ain't I, I take that on somewhere because you're talking about what you heard i know the person i know the individual i know their character i know what kind of person they are so i don't want to hear what you have said i made i made a post this morning and i said you know there are a lot of people that don't like you because somebody else lied to them about you. Yeah. 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 
That's cool. Amen. That's all right. That's because that just shows your level. That you're willing to take what somebody else says about an individual without first of all taking the opportunity to get to know the individual for yourself. Because the way you treat them might not be the way you treat me. And I don't know, at the end of the day, it's always two sides to a story. They, they may be the real reason. <laughs> and they just try to blame you for, ain't that like us? We know we the ones that messed up, but it's always the other one's fault. We know we the ones that did the dirt, but we can always find a way to put it on the other person. We know we guilty, but we want to play victim. Be careful. Be wise. Be alert. Every day of your life, be careful. The scripture said, you never know. You might be entertaining angels. Unaware. You never know. You never know what the people that you are speaking to on a daily basis. You never know what that person may be going through. Come on now. Sometimes somebody walking by, you say, oh, you just walked by me. You don't know that person just got, that, that, that woman may have just had an altercation at home with her husband. You don't know. You don't know that person may have just got evicted from their house. You don't know that person may be taking a bath in the gas station bathroom because they watered and got cut off. You never know what somebody is going through. You look at people and think one thing, but you never know what people are going through and what they are dealing with. And yes, you're looking at them and smiling and saying, the Lord bless you, God. And look, good morning, how you doing? Just you being a Christian. Just you being an example for Christ yes, may be all that individual needs yes. to help lift their spirit. Yes. That may be all that individual needs. And you never know. It may not be then, but on down the line, yes. That's it. they'll always remember, yes. somebody was kind to me. Yes. And you never know that person is in that position now. But you never know what God is going to do in that individual's life. And the person that you just helped out may turn around and do something for you later on. Tables always turn. An individual is down today, but they may not be down tomorrow because all it takes is a moment for God to do something in somebody's life and change that individual for the better. So let us be mindful about our speech. Let us be mindful about our conversation. Let us be mindful about our attitude. Let us be mindful about our facial expressions. Because that'll tell them. I know man will tell on me. I, look, I say that and I say that because let me, let, let me tell you, most of the sermons I preach, I preach because I'm preaching to myself. So, so, so I, I, I want you to remember, I got to work on that for myself because, you know, faith is fresh to tell on me. And, you know, you, you may be trying to portray one thing and in your face, you just. Your face saying one thing and your mouth is saying another thing. So, so, so we all can be asking for God to help us in that area of our life. Help me with my speech, Lord. Help me to season my speech. Help me to, to be mindful about the things that I say. And then, in the right moment, help me to shut up. In the right moment, help me to just say, okay, walk away. And go on about my business instead of trying to entertain a conversation that ain't going nowhere. Amen, church. Amen. If, you're, if maybe you're here tonight um, and, and, and you don't yet know the Lord is your Savior, you have not had your sins washed away by the blood of the Lamb, maybe you're watching us tonight um, and you are not yet a Christian, um, I want you to know you come out here in His Word, believing the same, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ as your Savior, being buried with Him in baptism, having your sins washed away. Christ Himself will add you to His body. And as a result of that, you live faithful unto death. And He will give you a crown of life that will never fade away. Maybe you're here, or maybe you're watching. You're standing in the need of prayer. You have that opportunity to come. Let us know how we can pray for you. Don't leave here if you know you need prayer. Don't leave here if you know you need somebody to pray for you. If you're subject to the invitation, while we have this moment, why not come to Jesus now? Let's together we stand and sing the song of invitation.